Uh, man, I'm so happy for our seniors, Joe Toussaint, Warren Washington. Uh, when you watched them come out, when their name was called, to have the United Supermarkets Arena full with people that early is, I've been a part of seeing just to have everybody there in the building already and how emotional Warren got and their families and Joe, you don't get senior nights that end in victories all the time. So I'm just super thankful for those guys. Um, they're awesome. Um, Bo, Jake, Ty, and Marley, our managers, they, I'll tell you, Bo, our head manager is, so dedicated to our team, it is unbelievable. And I'm so thankful that they get to be honored and what a great game for them to be honored in. And then um, I loved our defense, especially early in the first half, how we stretch the lead and give Baylor credit. Coach Drew knows what he's doing. And they, they put pressure on us. I thought they were getting to the paint, they were getting to the foul line. And then finally we were able to, um, you know, punch back and made a couple of huge shots when we hadn't made open threes. And I thought we had some pretty decent looks, but just finally just broke the game open with getting stops and playing in transition. And that's the, been the mark of our team. When we make threes in transition, we're really tough to defend. So just thrilled the way the game finished and really happy um, and thankful uh, to, to be a part of this team. Just what an awesome atmosphere, what a great home season. And uh, what a great way to finish Big 12 play in the regular conference. You guys showed improved defense the last couple of road games, different kind of caliber opponent here. What did you see from the defense defensive end tonight? Yeah, oh, the first half, it, were, it was connected. And they've got one of the best passing point guards in the country. He, he puts you in binds all over the court. Um, Ray J just – has the ability to not just score, but put you on his heels and throw the lob and then throw the the corner three pass. He can really pass. And I thought our effort was tremendous. Foul trouble really messed up our rotations going into the second half. And so we lost a little bit of that intensity, having to play too many minutes on some guys. But you can tell our defense is improving. But the biggest area I thought that was improved was our rebounding, 40 to 29 on the glass. And at the half, they didn't have an offensive rebound. We had six. And then the second half, we gave them um, seven. But we ended up you know, out-rebounding them in the end, which I think says a lot about this group and, and our grit to find a way to get better on that end. You said a couple of times throughout the kind of struggles of February, you're just worried about playing your best basketball in March. Do you think you're there? Oh, what do you think? <laughs> it's not bad. Coach, I guess when they're able to take the lead and it feels like you guys are kind of slipping away a little bit, you're able to really lock in on the defensive end. You're able to get stops, which created the opportunities to make the threes and really create separation down the stretch. What did you see defensively during that stretch from your guys? Yeah, I, I'll tell you, Chance McMillan had a few tough possessions to start when he came in the game in the second half with foul trouble. And give them credit because they've got great drivers. And this, this team we played today is one of the best teams in the country. Love, getting back healthy will really help them. And I thought his energy and his ability to drive to the basket caused us problems. But Chance's on-ball defense in that stretch where we got all those stops, he was extremely physical, and I think he just responded after them scoring off of angle after angle, forward roll, throwing it to the forward, and kind of really operating on that middle ball screen. We just didn't have a lot of resistance. I thought Chance finally stood his ground and was tremendous down the stretch that led to some stops. For Pop to shoot it the way he did at the end, and obviously Kerwin finds a stroke as well, I guess. When your team hits threes like that, is is it hard? Like it's extremely tough to beat you guys. Yeah, and and, and getting to the foul line early and getting in the bonus, and I thought just the angles and our guys stopping in the paint. You know, Rob Jennings was tremendous today. It just it, everything defensively, offensive rebounding, and and we were effective at. And obviously we missed some free throws, but Rob going two for three. And I think when you look at getting to the free throw line like that really helps open up. And I know our guys will make shots eventually. I, honestly, I, I mean, I've seen it every day. These guys don't miss very often. So when you see them practice and they don't miss very often, I have ultimate confidence because they work on their game. You stay after our practice, you'll see them all shooting. You come back at night, they're in the gym shooting. They just love to play the game. So it almost feels like if Kerwin misses four, for sure he's making four. I, I, that's honestly how I feel about it. Same way I feel that way about Pop. As long as we're on balance and we're shooting the right shots, I honestly believe we'll make make them and, and we'll win.
Coach, you mentioned the foul trouble. Pop played the last nine minutes with four. I think uh, him and Darion both picked up three before the half. I guess how big was it for those guys to play um, just, you know, physical, physical but disciplined defense down the stretch? Yeah, I, and, you know, that's what I said to our staff. Let's, let's, see, how, let's see how mature we are uh, rebound, uh, responding to this foul trouble at the end. You know, I mean, can we, can we still be physical and play the game the right way, even with – and D5 was the one that I thought really set the tone for how it would work. He and Pop, they were switching a lot of those ball screens and their offense of sharing the basketball and then still driving it, not just settling for threes. Darian got fouled a couple times going to the basket and got in ones. And, and then on the other end, to complement that, I just thought their activity was great. Their physicality was great without fouling. And I thought it showed a lot of maturity of those two guys. Not to lose composure and to continue our whole team. I mean, they took the lead, if I'm not mistaken. Or something like it. Felt like it. But just our fight to win and playing in, in this home crowd is can't. Our students that were here, even though they're on spring break, you just feel the energy in the building. And in Baylor's last game, I believe they shot 60-ish percent from three. I think they had four straight where they shot 40-plus. Uh, they shot 25%, 24% tonight. Um, what's been different about the way your team has been defending the perimeter the last few games? Because it really feels like that's been kind of on the up. Yeah, and this is the way I'll tell you, okay? Baylor plays a lot of ball screens. They go four around one. And with Warren and with our, with our lineups, we'd been in a retreat mode and kind of played – backing up and this team we're being more aggressive our activity off the ball and our help is more active and our coaching staff has just done an awesome job of helping create more more attack defensively as opposed to retreat and I think that those early active I mean you can see it we're just more active more deflections and we're there on the catch and we're making it more difficult then it's just about where do you want them driving and that's where we made a lot of mistakes today and that's what we're going to have to clean up coach at the beginning of the season you said you were going to have to fight for the right to play in the postseason you're there now what does this team where do you feel this team is right now and what do you have to do to accomplish what you want to accomplish in at when uh, Big 12 play starts, champ play. Um, you know, I'll tell you what I love about our team right now is they they want to win. Nobody's out there playing the game to see how they can benefit from it individually, and you can see the collective joy that our guys are playing with. It really, you you can. I mean, that everybody's taking accountability for the mistakes they make and everybody is trying to do their role as best they can to help each other win. And that's all you that's that's postseason basketball. That's how you win. And so judging by our love for each other, I would say we're ready, you know. Could we do some things better? 100%. But just the way our guys are competing and the way they're practicing and preparing, we're ready for postseason basketball. And the truth is, it's matchups. It's who you play when you play them. All those things going to – but we needed this double buy. We needed it just because we're playing limited numbers and we need the rest. So to be able to do that, I think, gives us the best chance. But now it's winter go home time, and our guys know that, and this is the most fun part of the year right here. Coach, I think it was around that seven-minute mark of the second half. Jacoby Walter makes it three. That was their first lead of the game since the opening minute. Um, Y'all come back down four three-pointers in a row. You know, did you think that was kind of the turning point of the game? Because that's really when the crowd got into it. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, it, it feels like our team can handle those moments. And this is what I was saying about our team caring for each other. There's not like a, how's this not going to work out look. It's like there's, they know what we need to do. We know what we need to do in order to win the basketball game. And there's a, diff, there's a belief in this team and each other that's legit. And it's fun to watch. It's fun to be a part of. And it's all attributed to their hard work and the way they care about each other and the way, the way we know we need to win. Looking at how EY's come along over the since really since Big 12 play, is there even if Warren comes back, um, if he does come back, do you think there's still a role for him to play in the postseason? Yeah, definitely. And you know what this is. This time of year, you just never know what it's going to be. And now EY knows he's ready. There's no confusion on that. In the first half, he may have been one of the best players on the floor. I mean, he was scoring, and the only thing he didn't do was make free throws. And he's working on that, and he will. He's a great shooter. So I know he'll make those. And that's where I'll tell you, we chart him every day. He's in the high 80s. He'll make them. 
He's just young, and he gets out there, and he wants to make it so bad. There's got to be – you saw the last one he made. I mean, he finally kind of settled into it. And we've been tweaking it, too, and that's not fun. But I'll tell you this, when we get in the most meaningful games, he's going to make them. He will. Uh, Coach, uh, with the foul trouble mounting up the way it did, particularly in the second half, and the difficulty of stopping that sort of slow middle screen roll with Misi sh shielding off the help defense, uh, this may be anathema to you, but was there any consideration at all of playing a little bit of zone maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think what we've considered honestly is the counters and how do you, how do you counter to what teams are doing. But what we finally started doing was making them shoot through our body and a few times they just got all the way to the basket. And when we, that's what I was saying about chance. If I didn't feel like there was execution of the scheme. If the execution of the scheme was perfect and we were still having a hard time, I would, I would consider something like that. But the, we weren't executing the scheme well enough. And so Chance finally, I think, responded to it and gave us a chance. And the one thing you got to understand about Baylor is they obviously play zone. They know what they're doing. And I thought the only way they could really get back into it was banging a bunch of threes. And if we could make them keep making contested twos through our body, I did feel like that gave us the best chance. It's like us. I mean, we ran away from the game because of what? Made a bunch of threes. And so it's what it feels like. What really gets them going is when they can kick it out and they're making threes. And just didn't want to give those up against the team. And if they go zone, four's making one, 11's making, you know, who knows who can get loose. Hey, and then I did want to – Shout out to the legend, man, Coach Kitley in, in track and field. What a remarkable national championship, you know? I mean, if there's, a, if, there's a, if there's a guy that I think is a Red Raider and loves this place, and when I was being considered for this, I've known him a long time. He was a huge advocate, and he called me, and, and um, I just love him. I love his heart, and I think he's real, and I think his – ability to impact people's lives regardless of national championships is the best thing about him but to do this just what a remarkable man and what a remarkable team we have here and so um, I love him and I'm so thankful for him and congratulations to him and those guys.